this Inspired Insider.com interview, we talk with Greg Rolett, CEO, founder of ProductProSystems.com. He's brutally honest with the things that worked and even the struggles they, they had. Also, he talks about a big roadblock. You may be facing this also. What was the biggest mistake that sometimes causes a relationship in business to fizzle out? He talks about it. He also talks about how everyone needs a back-end system. And he steps through some of the pros in marketing do for their product funnel. That and much more coming up now. Jeremy Weiss here. We're here with Greg Rolette. He's the best-selling author, online marketing expert, who's the CEO of The Product Pros. Their client list includes Michael Gerber, Brian Tracy, Tom Hopkins, Sally Hogshead, along with thousands of entrepreneurs. Greg helps his clients become bestsellers and helps them create a product system empire. Greg, thanks for being here. Awesome, Jeremy. Thanks for having me, man. Real it's excited. always a pleasure to talk to you. I love it. <laughs> um, so Greg's going to talk to us about, and I'm really excited to hear about what you have to say about this, because you're going to talk about top advice for business owners and founders, the big lessons you've learned, and some of the roadblocks and mistakes you've come up against with what you've done with your company, which has grown so fast. And before we get started with that, I always like to include a fun fact. And the fun fact about Greg is he was a rapper in a rock band and he even recorded songs with <laughs> bone thugs and harmony so I rapper never would believe that looking at looking at looking at this mug right now <laughs> <laughs> rapper to product pros so before we get started greg on some of the challenges what have you found that's worked well for your business because it's really thriving and, and you have a lot of amazing clients yeah, I think that the biggest thing, and there's going to be an overriding theme with what we talked about today, it's it's that you know people buy from people, and people buy from people that they know, like, and trust. So from the beginning, and everything that I've done is I put myself out there. You know, it's always videos of me. It's my voice. It's my product. It's my you know my personality coming across, and that's what's really sold people is you know they either it's it's you're polarizing one way or other. They either love you or they hate you. You just hope that more people love you than hate you. But you you really attract the people that are attracted to you because of your personality. And uh, one of my clients, uh, Sally Hogs, had really taught me that when we just created her her product. It's all about how the world sees you. And it's this personality that comes across in everything that you do. And, you know, it's it's why, me, you know, Jeremy, you and I have a, a great connection because we get along, right? I, I love talking to you. you. You love talking to me. We correspond. When I send, like, email blasts out, you always reply to them. And we've, we've created this relationship, but it's based on our personalities, you know, things about our kids and, you know, the, the, the trips that were going on, whatever the case is. But it's being at the forefront of your business and creating a personality-driven business that has really uh, led me to you know whatever level of success that, that that I have today. For someone who like they like to keep business business and kind of professional, what would you tell them to maybe start with in their life of bringing their personality out? Like what has worked for you? Because I think like you're so used to this by now, it comes natural. But for most people, they're used to kind of that corporate front. Oh, totally. And, you know, even at a corporation, I mean, it's always a person making a sale, right? So even at, you know, a biggest Fortune 500 in the world, they have sales reps that go out and actually make sale. And it's that personality that, you know, draws that sale across. It's the customer service rep. If your customer service rep is in India and they piss you off, that rubs back on the company. But it was a personality that caused that, you know, bad interaction. So really getting started, I mean, start with a media that's that that you're comfortable with. So not everybody's comfortable getting on video like this. Like I'm comfortable. You see me move my hands and you know jump all around and smile. I enjoy this, but that might not be your thing. Maybe it's writing. Uh, maybe right. it's just speaking. Like you know, my my wife is great on the phone. So what might be good for her are podcasts or you know CDs or audio interviews. Maybe it's writing. Maybe it's uh, you know video. There's all different kinds of modalities and ways that you can do it. I mean, you know, for speakers like this, maybe it's getting on stage. Maybe it's leading small one-on-one -on -one groups. But find that modality that you're comfortable with and start sharing your personality because one way or another, whether you believe it or not, it's going to come back to your personality at some point in the sales chain. That's going to, you know, if, even if you're a tech company, if you're going after VC money, you know, and you're, you're on stage pitching, that's you, that's your personality that they're buying into as a founder, right? So it always comes back to the personality. 
Right. So what's one of the, the pivotal, using the personality, you know, with the product pro systems, what was one of the pivotal connections you made that you remember and how you made it? Yeah, definitely. So I, I want to share a little bit about the story of, of where I met my current partner, uh, Nick Nanton from the Celebrity Branding Agency. And, you know, I was growing uh, my first real business uh, that, you know, was successful kind of in my eyes because it actually made money. And I could pay the bills with it uh, was my music business. So I actually, after my rapper and rock band days, uh, you know, blocks in the middle that we'll talk about today, but uh, I was selling information products to musicians. I was teaching them how to do internet marketing and create businesses and think more entrepreneurial. And uh, I was looking for as many outlets as I could to promote this business. And again, it was always me. I was writing blog posts, shooting videos, going to conferences, whatever it was. And uh, one of the outlets that I was writing for at the time was Mashable, uh, Mashable.com. Um, this is a few years ago. It's still very, very big site, but not really the, the pop icon site that it is today. And I wrote an article that, like how musicians are using social media to start up. And at the end, they always give you the, the byline. Like this article was written by Greg Rolad, yada, yada. And it said that I was a music marketer, I think, from Orlando, Florida. And so Nick was reading Mashable and kind of he was in the music industry. And in my days of being a rapper in a rock band, he was the local music attorney. So if you wanted to get a record deal, this was the guy that you wanted to talk to. And you know, we kind of knew each other, but didn't really know each other, you know, just from the scene. And when he read this article, he's like, dude, you're in my hometown and you're like writing for Mashable, talking about music marketing, you know, whatever it was. And he said, why don't you, you know, come out to the office, you know, let's meet at PF Chang's, um, which is in our plaza and let's grab some lunch. You know, one thing led to another. We just talked, we, we chatted, we connected. Again, the personalities got together. And uh, a few weeks later, he brought me into the office to meet his partner. And, uh, you know, he was like, hey, all that stuff you're doing for musicians, right? You're creating these products and these memberships and stuff like that. You know, we have some clients that we're working with that we help become best selling authors and help get them on TV and turn them into these, you know, celebrity experts. Can you do that same stuff for them? Because a lot of them want to be in your shoes, but, you know, teaching dentists or real estate or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I was like, that doesn't sound like a bad idea. But again, it was all about, you know, the, the, the personality coming back and just a, a happen chance by going out to these different media outlets, by, you know, being interviewed on podcasts like this, by writing guest blog posts, by, you know, creating these these channels for your content, for your story, for your personality to come out. That's where this relationship happened. And, and now we've been able to create two successful businesses, um, both the product pros and celebrity expert marketing, uh, which is a done free marketing services company that we created on the back of the product pros, all from writing a guest post on, on Mash com. Um, so really, I think it's a cool story. At least. That's a pretty cool story. Now, from there, how did you decide, how did you get one of those pivotal connections or sales with within when you were getting looking for clients with the product pro system? Yeah, definitely. So the the one advantage that I had was that story that I just told you was the connection that Nick had this business. Uh, it's called the Dixon Nanton Celebrity Branding Agency, which the product pros is kind of a sister, you know, uh, in the hierarchy of companies and, and run with it. And they had clients already, but I was just this new guy. And at the time it was, you know, two, three years. I'm still a young guy, but you know, I'm this 20 something kid who's like, make money on the internet, you know? Um, and that's not what the dentist, the chiropractor, the financial advisor wants to hear, right? He, he's got a legit business. He's got staff. He's got kids and families to feed. He doesn't want this internet pipe dream. Um, so I really had to come in and again, use the personality to win these guys over. And so we did a lot of educational marketing. So a lot of special reports. Uh, we did a lot of audios, teleseminars, webinars. And the first client that we got um, came on a teleseminar. And it was at the end of the teleseminar, Nick and I uh, took questions. We all, I, I, I love doing q and It's probably my favorite part of the whole thing because I, I like I like dare you to stump me, right? So, you know, <laughs> what question can he ask me? I, and I'm very transparent, right? I, I want to teach you. I really do want to help you. So uh, I had a guy who was very skeptical on the call and he was just like, you know, how is this going to affect my business, change my business? You know, how, you know, what can it do for me? I gave him a, a, a good enough answer because like, he was the first person that bought off the teleseminar seminar and uh, again it goes back to you know just laying it all on the line being very transparent I mean I, I got nothing to hide right we all you know the seven secrets to this so there are there are no secrets right I want to help you you know succeed as much as you can so I'll give you whatever you got and you know once I give you those tools well you might need some help applying them implementing them whatever it is and that's where the services part comes in but you know so my biggest tip is is just give 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 and really care about people and that's how I get the most sales is is that kind of caring attitude yeah. What is the most common question you get from someone who's looking into, you know, kind of getting that their product out there or marketing it? Uh, and it's one that I didn't really think about in the beginning. And it's that um, I'm not and, and sometimes it's, it's not this wording, but it's the I'm not good enough. 
or hmm. what I know no one would pay for. Hmm. Um, it doesn't usually come out that way, but that's really what they're feeling. They're insecure that, you know, just because I'm kind of good at this, you know, doesn't mean that other people are. And so that's one of the biggest, you know, things that we get is, is you know, uh, and they're really successful people. These are people running very, you know, great companies um, with great people and great management skills. And, and they just have that, that uh, it's a self-doubt issue, almost a confidence issue. So one of my biggest jobs is to come at them and say, you know, listen, you're at the top of your game. There's people that want to be in your shoes, right? There's people that want to ascend to where you are. Um, you know, even if, so say your business is doing a half a million dollars. Well, that's great for the person just getting started who wants to get to the half a million dollar mark. If you're at the million dollar mark, there's all those people from zero to a million that could use your help. Um, you know, and there's different challenges that come at different phases. And it, you can do this anything. You can do this for relationships or health or fitness or right. whatever the case is, or in my case, music. But there's all someone that wants to get to that level and you don't have to get them all the way to the top can you just get them to the next notch now, obviously you don't want to oversell it and say I'm gonna make you 20 million dollars and you've never <laughs> helped build a 20 million dollar company right we want to be we want right. to be authentic with our message but you know I can teach someone how to create a six-figure information business that's what I can do I've created them myself I've created them now for my clients um, I, I have not for my clients created a seven-figure information business yet so I'm very upfront about that you know I have a lot of six-figure success stories and that's awesome I'm very proud of that and I'm that guy that can help you get started Started, create that first product, create that second product, and get to that level. So, you know, you, that's just the really, you know, what I care about deeply there. So, so tell me this, Greg. So, with now yeah. you're there at that point, what you obviously have a lot of big clients and a lot of entrepreneurs that you help. What's a big roadblock or challenge that you faced with the business? I, I think, and it's somewhat it's still a roadblock and it was funny this is kind of what we were talking about before we hit record is um scalability of time right so in a personality driven business um everyone wants the person they want the guy right if you're positioning yourself as the guy right people want to work with the guy they don't want the guy's cronies right they want the guy so that transition of scalability, right? There's only so many hours in a day. And so um, our, our typical product when someone comes in is about three hours of recorded material. It's kind of our, our base package. So that means I got to spend an hour or two hours before recording where we go over the outline and create all that. Um, then I got to actually create the interview questions, so another maybe hour or so there. Then I got to record with them. I mean, you're looking at, you know, five to six hours of invested time on one client. And if you have 30 clients, 50 clients, and then you grow into 100 clients. So there's only so many people you can work with. Now, obviously, that creates scarcity. Uh, you can use some price elasticity and, and start to raise your fees. But at some point, you're just like, dude, I don't want to work 80 hours a week. <laughs> you know. So uh, the, one of the biggest roadblocks in a personality-driven business is the person, right? Uh, so I know some local tech entrepreneurs who, you know, they go after VC funding. And there's only so many pitches you can do in a week. There's only so many board meetings you can have in a week um, before you actually get the work done. Right. And then you get caught up doing the work. Right. So I'm recording these products for my clients, but I'm not out marketing to get new clients right. on the board. So uh, there's definitely a scalability factor with the personality driven business. And uh, it's something that we work on all the time. I mean, hiring people for, for some of those, you know, pre-production tasks. I've, we've hired an amazing team that does the editing. And I, I couldn't design my way out of a, a, a kitty box of crayons. You know, it's just not my skill. So we have obviously those people in place. So it's getting those people in place that can, you know, alleviate some time on me so I can be the guy that brings more people into the funnel. So how do you overcome that scalability issue? Like what do you do to put those systems in place so it doesn't have to be only you? Cuz I mean a lot of people listening, they're probably in a service business of some sort and so that is a main, yeah. major issue for them. Yeah, and, and the big word that you said there is systems and processes, right? So, you know, when you record a product, and now we've done hundreds of these for our clients, I mean, there is a system to it, right? Everybody's story is unique, and I mean, you've seen it, you know, with all the interviews you've done, is everybody has a unique story, but it's all following the same arc, right? So whether you're trying to help someone get a better business, a better relationship, get healthy, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end, right? So here's what you need to do first, here's what you need to do second. And so it's creating those processes for what needs to be done. After a product's recorded, what happens? Well, you gotta export all the audio, get it to the, you know, the, to the guy who's gonna edit it. After it's edited, it needs to get to the person who's gonna transcribe it. After it gets transcribed, it gets to the girl who creates the workbooks and manuals. While all that's happening, the designer's starting to create all the blah, you know, the whole nine. But 
it's sitting down and taking the time. This is the hardest thing for entrepreneurs to do because we're, you know, we're we're shiny object chasers, you know, um, you know, who's the next phone call I can jump on? What's the next podcast I can get interviewed with? What's the next post I can write? But sit down and write those processes out. Um, and it's hard. It's hard for me to do because I am creative and I'm, I'm an entrepreneurial and I'm, I'm fast thinking. It's hard for me to sit down and say, all right, these are the same questions that I ask every time. But that's what I, I personally, and, and it's funny going through this now, I'm like, man, I got a crap to do. <laughs> but, but that's, but, but that's how I've been able to alleviate some of the back end stuff. Now I need to do that for myself on the front end. And so it really is systems and processes. And these are things that are beaten into us by people all the time on these podcasts is set up the system, set up the processes. Yeah. And just because you know something, just because something's common knowledge, um, doesn't make it common practice. Right. Right. So, and that's not, that's a learning lesson for myself as well as everybody that's listening right now. It's a non-sexy thing that we know we should do that sometimes we don't do. And uh, so the first thing you tell people, they should pretty much write down pretty much detailed what they do. And then once yeah. you do that, then they can kind of see what pieces they can hand off to someone else that would leverage their time a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. And, and for some of the things that we do, I mean, I have people that'll jump on the interviews and listen to the interview process with me. Um, you know, I have people on the pre-production calls so they can really hear the process. Um, now in our done for you marketing services company, uh, we do like done for you newsletters, things like that. And I've had a, an assistant now jump on three or four newsletter calls. And after the third call, he's like, dude, I can do this. And I'm like, thank you. That's, that's great. just a hallelujah. <laughs> you know, and then he can take over that responsibility. And now that's one less half hour call I need to be on. Um, so, but it is, it's, it's, and I think there's also, so it's not just creating those systems, but there's a teaching process, right? I don't want my employees just to be like drones who are going through checklist after checklist. I want them to take initiative. I want them to have um, some skin in the game. I want them to care uh, about the company. And that goes back to me teaching them. How can I help them reach their goals, not just reach my goals, right? Because right. they always see the founder is, you know, you know, this guy's making a ton of money and he's driving a nice car and I'm here making 10 bucks an hour. I don't want them to ever feel like that. I want them to feel like they're a part of this thing. And so that's why I have them jump on the calls with me. I have them come to client meetings with me. I want them to feel like they're a part of something. And I think yeah. that helps to create those processes, create those systems, because now they feel like they're a part of it. And they can see the fin. And luckily in my business, they can see the finished product. They can see Sally Hogshead go on stage at super conference and sell like 70 products, you know, on stage in front of a group, you know, and they're like, holy crap, that's the product we made for her now coming to fruition. Like that's the kind of stuff that that I really want to instill in my employees. Yeah, it's really rewarding when you, you see that final product. So what's one of the um, examples of maybe, I know we were talking a little bit about clients and they're good and yep. you could spend your time with great <laughs> clients, but you don't want to spend your time with maybe clients that are sucking your energy. What was one of those suck your energy clients? Do you have an example for that? Oh, totally, man. And uh, obviously in a services business, we get uh, the biggest thing with us is client creep, right? So we had just one client and we said, you know, here's the deliverables for the month. And we give them a little bit of wiggle room. You know, if something emergency comes up like, hey, you know, ABC just called and they want me on the air tomorrow. Can you whip up a quick email or something? And we're always like, yeah, sure, because we want them to capitalize on that stuff. But client creep comes up real fast when they're like, all right, well, you did that for us. Can you do this one other thing? And then this one other thing and this one other thing. And then, and then there's this one client who we we're doing like follow up campaigns, marketing style stuff for them. And they're like, well, you know, while you're doing that, can you just adjust it real quick for our seminars? And then we have these this book that we're launching. You do it for the book launch. And then we have this. And they're, and, and I was like, whoa, all of a sudden I got like 10 marketing campaigns. On. Um, and so I think setting expectations for people up front is really important. Um, and especially deliverables, timelines, you know, what's going to happen with well, the product pros. Like we have this down and, and right now they, when they sign up to be a client, we send them a new client kit. It comes in a really nice folder and they get some special reports. And, but they also, the main document that I really want them to get in there is a what to expect document. It's like, you know, if you have not been contacted, you'll be contacted with Greg to schedule your, your first consultation after that consultation, this happens. And then this happens. And then when here's how we schedule the recording, here's how to a good recording so you can go out and buy a microphone if you need to buy a microphone yada yada and it's that expectation document and when we started sending that out clients were like oh now i know what to expect and when to expect it as opposed to hey you signed up for this random thing online and you gave your credit card and maybe you'll get some stuff someday right, <laughs> right. Um, and i think that's and that's the fear that a lot of clients have, especially, you know, over the internet, you know, is I plot my credit card in and I spend, you know, our services aren't, you know, necessarily inexpensive that, that they're just going to get taken. 
right? And I don't want them to have that feeling. So you've got to set those expectations. Um, really, really important. Just with this interview, you know, you had expectations. I signed up for a specific time. You sent over the interview questions in advance. You told me it was going to be, you know, this certain time frame, and you keep those expectations, right? And it's a it's a great relationship, and and we both love doing it because we both understand the agreement that we have, and that that makes the relationship hundreds of times better. What's one of the biggest hiccups you find with that? welcome pat you know that first initial like you were saying kind of what to expect what what seems to be the biggest hiccup when they read it or when you go over it with them um I th on my end it's uh, uh, bad selling right so the sales the, whoever sold the product most of the time it's me so I'm, I'm lucky there but i also have a sales team that sells all of the agency products and sometimes they will oversell to get the sale um and then they get the thing and they're like oh I didn't know that's what I was really getting. Um, and like so, overselling, like think, what do you mean? Like what do they think? Like o over over promising, you know, specific deliverables. Um, you know, sometimes you know with our stuff, they usually get one physical sample product, and then the sales rep will be like, "Yeah, you're gonna get like a hundred of them," and I'm like, "Holy crap, that's cut all our budget away." Um, you know, or, or saying, you know, you get a 10 hour product when they just really signed up for a two or three hour product or, you know, you're going to get, you know, Greg's going to coach you on, on and do all your marketing for you. And I'm like, no, I have like one marketing call with you, you know, so it's, 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 it's managing those expectations again before they get the document. But that document really does, it spells it out in, in clear language what they get. And again, the cool thing and it's also the setback of a personality driven business is they get to work with me, right? So if they have problems, they're again, they're working with the guy um, and they're not getting passed off. So that's, it's a blessing and a curse because now I jump on the phone. I'm like, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm sorry that that, you know, you were sold that expectation. This is what your package entails. I, I'd love to upsell you. <laughs> Cause you have different package. packages, right? And that's why they of may course. have seen something else. And then they bought one thing, but thought they got, you know, a different package that's on the site or something. Yeah. Exactly. But that welcome kit that we send out really helps to set that expectation um, of here's what you get and here's when you're going to get it. Um, probably one of the most valuable things that we've created in our business. And we don't see it as an expense. So this thing costs like 25, 30 bucks to send to the client because their CDs, their special reports, it's all printed in color. It's in a nice, you know, custom folder. Um, there's a DVD in there and it's, it's nice. And then we overnight it to them. So FedEx, geez, they're like, killing people these days, you know, with FedEx fees. Um, but, you know, I don't see that as a $25 expense. I see that as a $25 now customer service headache to deal with because now they know, right. you know, what's going to happen. But they also now are also, they've already seen me as the expert, but now I'm sending them more stuff. I'm sending them, hey, listen to this CD, listen to this DVD of when Greg was interviewed by Brian Tracy about info products and this and that. And they're like, holy crap, this Greg guy, he's, he's a big deal. I should take his advice and do what he says. Um, so that's the second piece that it does in the puzzle. Yeah, so that definitely I could see how that would eliminate any buyer's remorse. If I get a CD with you and Brian Tracy and other works and educating me, what's what's a mistake you've made? Because you put out a lot of products. What's a yeah. mistake we can learn from from the product side of things? On the product side of things, so we've launched some really cool programs and we haven't capitalized on a back end on some of them. Um, and so what I mean by that is we'll complete a product for a client. Um, so Jeremy, you go through our product creation program, we create your product, product for you, and then it, it, the relationship just kind of, it doesn't fizzle, but it just, just ends, right? So you got your product, you're like, woo, I got my product, and, you know, and the relationship ends. And only recently have we seen like, that's stupid. Like we need to continue to see what we can do to help these people. What else do they need from us? Why aren't they selling it? Was there a roadblock? Like, you know, some of our clients, you know, a year later don't even have the product on their website yet. And all it took was a quick email to say, you know, hey, Jeremy, you know, we finished this product for a year ago. Why aren't you using it yet? You know, right. and they're like, oh, well, um, I, I don't really know how to set up a, a shopping cart. And we're like, seriously? Like, you know, but, you know, and that gives us an opportunity, A, to either sell them more products or services, or if it's a quick fix, I can just send them to a link, like to a blog post we wrote or a special report or something. I'm like, here's how you, you get your website set up or whatever, you know, or go, go check out Kajabi or Optimize, whatever site we're recommending. And they're like, Greg, that literally just changed everything. And now they got their product up for sale. So now what do they do? Now they recommend and refer us more people, or they come back for a second product, or they just give me a nice glowing testimonial and tell me I'm a nice guy, right? But either way, it helps our business grow by helping them. And so the biggest mistake we made was not doing that soon enough by not by not continuing that relationship, making them feel like they're a part of something versus just you bought something. Here it is. You know, even though we have a longer relationship than that, but it's just like, here's your product, you know, and you, you should be a push them off. Um, big, big mistake 
um, that we created. And finally, we're, we're curbing that mistake these days. It's tough because people, you know, you can't force someone to take action. And so like no. you're, you're almost, you know what's best for them, but you need their, their help in the, in the process. You know, what have you yeah. found with that's been a successful back end or that's worked really well for that you've helped create with some of your customers? Um, so a good back end, obviously, for us is the printing and shipping of stuff. So the, the more that we can help you sell products, um, usually we're the fulfillment company. So we'll we'll actually print and ship your products for you. And we carry, we carry a markup on that. It's not ridiculous. You know, it's not we're, we're charging double or anything like that. But, you know, if I can get, you know, Jeremy selling 20 week and or a month and Nick selling another 30 products a month and Joe selling 50 products a month all that adds up and that's trickling money that we didn't have to do much work for right. the client obviously loves it because they're making sales they don't have to do anything they just uh, usually if they're like with Infusionsoft or one shopping cart it just auto sends us the orders so they don't have to do anything and uh, it's hands off and we just get residuals from that so that's been really cool so thinking of the back ends you can offer your clients it's really a convenience to them but it Know, it, it all trickles in. You know, if you're making a couple extra thousand dollars a month from printing and shipping from stuff you did two years ago, um, that's the stuff that we really love. Obviously, affiliate links, you know, things like that that we've just started incorporating again. You know, uh, we need a shopping cart. Well, here's our Infusionsoft affiliate link. They're going to buy it anyway. Um, you know, and it doesn't make Infusionsoft more expensive for them. Right. Um, it's just saying, hey, if you're going to get it, why not use this link and give us some credit? Um, and now we're we're finally uh, we've kind of resisted it for a while, but the coaching back end um, to where it's we're going to do some coaching for our clients. <clears throat> yeah, um, again, it goes back to the guru, uh, expert, whatever you want to call it, uh, the personality driven business. Is that well? Now I got to you know line what I want to talk about, and I got to do the recording, and I got to do the live call. And it's not that I don't want to talk to my clients. It's just again, it's another something to schedule in. But we're finally going to go into that route because we also now want to take them just from creating a product. So now we want to help them create a business. And usually in the information side, if you look at the greats like Brian Tracy or the Dan Kennedys or the, you know, any of those, those big Tony Robbins, they go from, you know, free report to, to creating a product, to creating a bigger product, to creating a coaching program, to masterminds, to live events. And so we want to help them build that ascension funnel. Um, so the coaching business and is, is really what's going to help us to do that, to, to start giving them those steps to create the next level in their business. So what's one of the biggest lessons you've learned while running the business? The biggest lessons that I've learned. Yeah, what's a big lesson um, you learned that, you know, if you look back at yourself like three years ago, five years ago, that you would have been like, Greg, you would have shaken yourself, like, you need to know this. Like, this is what you should know. Um, so I'm gonna say this, it's success loves speed. Um, and so what I mean by that is you have an idea, act on it. Um, if you've met someone at a conference right now and it's it's Tuesday and the event goes till Friday, don't wait till the next Monday to send them an email. Send it right now, right? If if you uh, if you have a contact or something, share it with someone right now. Um, if you uh, you know have an idea for a promotion, don't wait till the perfect moment. Do it now. If you have that product you know that you want to create, do it now. Write that sales letter now um, because really it, it, success loves speed. So the best you know j joint venture partnerships, things like that, I've created. I uh, was just at the super conference with. Dan Kennedy met a, a really big influential figure there, and you know that afternoon I had a package FedEx to his office the next day, right? And it was waiting for him. It had letters, and he got it. And he's like, "Holy crap! I'm back in my office. And I already have this package, and now we're doing a big deal together, right?" So, anything that you're trying to do, there's no better time than right now. And if that means getting up early, if it means staying up late, if it means working a little harder, if it means delegating something so you can do the important task, success loves speed. Um, so. Be fast. That's one of the biggest lessons I've learned because I've always been the, ah, I'll get to that proposal tomorrow. Well, this person's waiting to give you money, right? Um, I, I always hated that when you would call someone, you're like, I need to order this thing right now and they're right. making it difficult to order, right. right? Right. You're in the business of taking people's money to grow your business. So if someone wants a proposal from you, do drop whatever you can and get that proposal out. Um, you know, Drop whatever you can and get them that link to something that they needed to purchase. Drop whatever you're doing to create that relationship or that contact. People respect that so much about you and um, it goes against the Dan Kennedy model of you know you can only fax me once a week and I don't talk to anyone and or the Tim Ferriss I do autoresponders and don't talk to real people. Um, my my personal opinion is is that success loves speed. Um, so let's go with that for uh, biggest lesson. That's a powerful one. Learned. That's a good one. I like that one. Awesome. So what? Um, 
Talking about that, but on uh, what's a big milestone you're especially proud of? You know, we talked about some of those lessons, some of those mistakes. What's a, a milestone that you accomplished? Yeah, so this is one that I talked about in, in one of the Mixer G interviews is, um, you know, obviously being a musician, I was a rapper in a rock band and, uh, you know, traveled the country, got to got to record Bone Thugs and Harmony, but I also got to, re- to to open shows for like Papa Roach and Buck Cherry and Seven Dust and some really cool bands. And, and uh so one thing, obviously, in the music industry are the award shows, right? You got the MTV Awards, you got the Grammys, the, the AMAs, whatever. Um, and so uh, now I'm actually a member of the Grammy Association. And because of that, I get tickets to go to the Grammys every year. And uh, uh, two years ago, I got to go for the first time. And uh, Nick, myself, and Nick, my partner, uh, my other partner, Jack, he's also a member of the Grammy Association. And uh, we brought 20 of our clients to the Grammys. And we sat in a suite in uh, the Staples Center, which is where the Lakers play out in L.A. And we had 20 of our clients watch the greatest acts on the face of the earth. I mean, that there was Paul McCartney there. There was uh, Bruce Springsteen. There was Lady Gaga. It was uh, when Adele won like 30 awards that night. Uh, Little Wayne, DJ Tiesto. I mean, literally any and everyone. And just, you know, sitting in that box. And I took some videos and, and photos of me up there. And it was just like looking down at the crowd because we were in one of the skyboxes. You're just like, this is why we do what we do. Right. Because it's, it's about a business on one end and you want to grow the business. But my my thought in the business is that the more people that I help to get them what they want, well, they're helping me in turn to get what I want. You know, the lifestyle that I want. I'm able to spend time with my kids, my my, my son now, my wife, and I'm able to do these things like go to the Grammys. I've been to the Kentucky Derby twice. I get to take my clients to Napa Valley. I mean, that's the coolest part. Is And so for me, it was that moment walking the red carpet and then sitting in the box. I was just like. This is why we do what we do is for moments like this, the moments and the experiences, because we all get caught up in the holy crap. I got 300 emails to check today or I got, you know, we were talking before, like today I'm in a day of just phone call. I I literally am every hour in the hour. I'm on another call or whatever it is. And um, we get caught up in that, that we forget that why we do this. And I do it for the experiences to take my son to the beach, to go to the Grammys, to, you know, be able to meet such cool people. Um, So that that's really kind of that mountaintop. Um, for me, are the moments that I can look back right. on. I mean, on the other side of things, people see that and they go, wow, like he just every everything he touches turns to gold. And we know that's not true. What was one of those painful mm-hmm. moments in business that you could remember that you obviously got over that to get to that milestone? Yeah, I mean, painful moments. Um, so I'm going to the product pros is a very transactional business. So they pay us to create the product for them and then they're done. And so uh, when uh, you have a small month where there's not a lot of new growth coming in um, and you look at the payroll that you got to meet and you look at your overhead expenses and you go, man, I'm not, I'm not going to get a check this month. You know, like it, you forget about new blood. And I think we talked about it earlier in the, the delegation stuff is you get so caught up in the business that you forget to work on the business and bring in the new clients. And we've had a few months like that where we're just like, all right, well, let's cut a $200 check this month and, and hope we can get some ramen noodles and, you know, let's go out and sell some stuff next month. But then next month you might, might have a $30,000 month or a $100,000 month. Who knows, you know, what you're going to have. Um, you know, I, I, I joke around, I'm a traveling salesman, you know, I, I go to event to event and I, I hawk my products and services and, you know, so- good days you have bad days you have good months you have bad months and um you you really got to ride the highs because you know the next month could be a low you know and so it it is it is scary and that's why we've worked really hard to create the continuity to create the back ends we've created this marketing services company to get people locked in 12 month contracts and um it's not because i want to lock you in and and take all your money it's because you know i want to build a stable business if i have a stable business i can take better care of you as a client because i'm not worried about overhead i'm not worried about payroll i can just focus on delivering the stuff that i need to deliver for you um, and I think that's really, really important. Um, so it's just, you know, those moments where you're like, dude, I hope we can keep the lights on this month. Um, you know, we've yeah. all been there and, and it's, uh, it, it's, it, it pushes you really hard um, to make and lights sure that a it fire. doesn't have to happen. Yeah, for sure. It, yeah, lights totally. a fire. And, and I could see like it's something people need. Like, you know, creating one product is not – some people may think, oh, this is a solve all if I just get this product. But the reality is – if they have an ongoing relationship and coaching and marketing or whatever they need to do to make that successful, like that's a huge first step, but it's just the first step into whatever they need to do to, you know, yeah. kind of promote their product. Right. And it will just real quick to, to segue to that. The good, the, probably the, the best thing I love about what I do 
um, that, uh, and especially as an entrepreneur, is I have the ability to make my own income, right? I can just, you know, call up a buddy or create a relationship with someone and jump on a webinar or jump on a stage and say, hey, I got this thing, you know, come buy it, right? Where the person working at McDonald's and he's making 10 bucks an hour, he's never going to make 100 grand a year. He can't, he doesn't have the opportunity to do that where, you know, hey, if I need to, to create payroll or whatever it is, I can send out a couple more emails. I can create a new product on the fly. I can, you know, go out and speak in an event. And so the greatest skills that you can have in the entire world are sales and marketing, yeah. right? And in my opinion, because you can create your own future. It's on you, right? If you don't eat this month, it's because you didn't sell enough or you didn't market right. enough or you didn't get enough messages out there. You didn't create enough connections. Um, and, and that's what I love about what I do is is it, it's on me, right, to, for this for this to, to succeed. And um, it, obviously it works both ways because if you get lazy and take a month off, you know, but at the same time, I can I can find those opportunities to go out there. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to brush over that point too about the, you know, we all experience that whether it's that day, that week, or that month of, holy crap, I need to, <laughs> I have the payroll, I have all these expenses. What do you do at that point to motivate yourself and to, to kind of push forward? Because I'm sure a lot of people right now, they're I mean, listening and they're going through that right now. Like, what do you do? Yeah. Um, so obviously new for me, and you know this, is uh, I have an eight-month-old son, and this is going to be a terrible because we're on a like a you know, uh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I was going to bring it up on the the phone. Is you know, I got a little eight month old son there that I bring Very up. Very cute. Um, and I look at that picture and I go, you know, I'm going to do whatever it takes to give this kid everything he wants, you know, in right. the world. Um, obviously, that was, it was there's a different motivation, you know, two years ago than it is now. But right now, I can tell you all, you know, everything that I do is how can I provide a better future for this kid? Because right. um, I have the ability to do that. And I, I take that as a very big responsibility, you know, something that my dad didn't have. He was an electrician. You know, he, he's still working now as an electrician, getting beat up. He's got like arthritis and his body's getting beat up. He doesn't have the same opportunities and advantages that I do, you know, and, and I don't take that for granted. I don't take right. that lightly. I don't think it's a light responsibility. I, I want to give this kid everything I can. So for me, when it's, you know, June, we're, we're in June right now. So at the end of June, June like 26th, 27th, and payroll isn't coming in, I'm staying up till three in the morning saying, well, what can I do tomorrow? You know, is there an event I can jump at? Is there, you know, somebody that I haven't talked to in a couple of weeks I can get a sale? Come, whatever it is, you just look at that picture and you go, I'm not letting him not eat, you know. But for you, I mean, there's some reason why, right? There's a, uh, a really good book. I was just doing a, a, a webinar with a, my buddy John Spencer Ellis, and there's a book that he recommended. I think it's The Power of Why or The Reason Why. It's something I, I know like what that. you're talking about. Um, it's like Eckhart Tolle or yeah. something. Yes, that yes. is what it is. It's Eckhart, yeah. And um, if, there's some reason why you want to do what you do, right? You just need to find that. It took me a while to find it, right? And now I have a, I have a, a really good reason why and a great reason why, but you got to find that. What burns deep inside of you? And it doesn't matter if it's business or health, right? Because everybody wants to lose another five, 10 pounds. You know, I mean, there's some people that obviously need to lose more than that, but is it the trigger from the doctor that says, if you don't start eating good and, and whatever, you're going to, you're going to die or you're going to have this disease. You're not going to be able to walk, whatever the case is. Don't wait till that place. But, but, is that the motivation why? Or, you know, if you're getting married and you want to drop the 10 pounds to look good in a dress, but find your reason why in your business. Is it because you really do want to help people? Is it because you want to provide for your family? Is it because you find that reason why? And it's something that I can't give you in a podcast. It's something that, you know, you can't really read a book and find. It's, it's something that you really have to spend some time, you know, drink a couple margaritas and just be like, you know, this is why I want to do what I do. So, um, you, you gotta find that. That answer is mine. I mean, hard. that's exactly what I. Margaritas yeah. is actually. I don't want to be in the Chicago winters. <laughs> the Chicago winters are horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So come down under the palm trees and we'll, we'll have some rum and uh, have a good time. Exactly. Um, so it. you know, we talked a lot about the advice you have for top, you know, for founders. What's uh, either yeah. best or worst piece of advice you've gotten from a mentor? I'm going to share two. One is, again, the overriding theme we've talked about. Uh, it's my mentor, Jack, who's also one of my partners, both in the, in the product business and the uh, the marketing business. And uh, the, he beats this into me, and I, that's why I'm trying to instill it into you guys today, is that people buy from people. And people buy from people that they know, like, and trust. And you got to get people to know you. So that's where you're doing the marketing and you're you're creating partnerships and you're doing advertising, whatever it is, to get them just to know you. But then they got to get to like you. Just because they know you and, you know, Taco Bell has thousands of commercials and billboards, you, you know them, but it 
doesn't mean you like them because they got terrible meat that's in their product, right? <laughs> you got to have the good meat that's in your product, right? You got to find right. the good meat. Um, you don't want the cat meat. Um, so you get them to like you and then you got to get them to trust you. And how do you do that? You create communication over time. You have the testimonials. You have the case. You get into big media, um, which is one of the big things we do. We help people become, you know, if you've got a book, you're an expert authority on a topic. If you have a book that's this thick, that means that you know that much about a topic, right? If you're being seen on TV, if you're being seen on some of the big podcasts, you're creating that trust from third parties because I can say how great I am all day long and I will. Don't get me wrong. I'll tell you how great I am. But it means a whole hell of a lot more when Brian Tracy says Greg's one of the best information marketers in America. It means a whole lot more when Andrew Warner says, you know, the, at Greg Roulette, that was one of the best interviews I've ever done. He's an awesome storyteller. That means a whole hell of a lot more than me saying it to you. So it's the three pieces. You got to get them to know you, like you, and trust you. And that can't mentor Jack. And uh, the second one is uh, from Zig Ziglar, and I might mess this up, but uh, it, it's something to the effect of, you know, uh, timid salespeople have skinny kids. And I don't want my kid <laughs> to be skinny. So, you know. I didn't think that's what you were going to say, but okay. <laughs> you thought I was going a different way with it. Uh, but, um,. But really what that boils down to is don't be ashamed to sell what you got if what you got can really help someone, right? And right. what I have, I think, can really help the right person. And so I'm not afraid to ask for money. I'm not afraid to ask for the sale or the close. I don't feel like I'm being sketchy or schemy or sleazy. I feel like, you know, hey, if you want to be an information marketer, if you want to create these kind of products, I'm the guy to do that, right? If you, you – make the best organic tomatoes in town, you're not going to be shy about that. Like my tomatoes, the best in town, it's organic, it's grown, it's going to keep you healthy and vibrant and give you better skin and this and that. Don't be bashful if you have something great. Now yeah. you got to have something great, right? You don't want to sell the next Twitter marketing secrets revealed where you get 40,000 followers tomorrow night. Like that, that's not what I'm talking about. You know, you want to have something authentic that you can help people right. with, but don't be scared to sell it because if you're scared to sell it, you're going to have those skinny kids and uh, <laughs> we don't want any skinny kids around here. Right. No. And you're, like you said, you have to be proud and just tell people because a lot of people do yeah. hold back, even though they know that they have something great, something internally, you know, holds them back. So yeah, I like that. Now I have one last question for you, Greg, but before I ask it, I want you to tell us a little bit more about your business. What are you working on now? What's exciting to you? Definitely, man. So obviously the product pros is, is my, my true love. It's my baby. Um, we're, we're a done for you information product and information business, uh, creation company where we do all the for you. So if you have an idea of that you want to create a product to help a certain group of people, um, we can help you flesh out the idea, record the product with you, whether it's video or audio. We have a really cool studio here in Orlando, Florida um, that you can come in. If it's just audio, obviously we, re we can record over Skype or the phone, whatever it is. Um, so we record it with you. We edit it. We create workbooks and action guides and manuals and design and graphics and packaging. And it's really completely hands off for you other than getting the, the cool stuff that you know out of your head um, and onto some kind of tangible media format. And then we also help you launch the product. We help you market the product. We have lots of different services on the back end to help you with that as well. And now we're really helping people create information businesses. So having one product, well, that's not a business, right? You got a product that you sell on your blog or your website. Uh, what's the next product? What's the continuity site? What's the coaching program? What's the big service you can sell into? Because um, as I found the music business, selling one forty-seven dollar product is, is how I started this whole thing. Was selling one forty-seven dollar product. You got to sell a whole hell of a lot of them every single month, um, you know. So, what are the things that you can do to, to to really grow a business and not just have this thing that you got to keep selling every month? So, uh, we do that. You can learn more at productprosystems.com. That's productprosystems.com. And if you want to reach me, just throw a Greg at in front of that. Yeah, and, uh, I'll link it up too in the in the awesome, post. Man. What else? Very cool, man. I know there's Appreciate something it. else going on. I don't know if you can talk about it. Um, the celebrities guide me there. Like, the celebrity. Oh uh, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, so um, we do some really cool stuff. Actually, we're, we're, we're filming this one day before I head to New York, and uh, we're actually throwing an event with Steve Forbes. Uh, we brought him in to speak at an event that we created called Success in the New Economy. We're bringing in 40 of our clients who are going to sit in attendance and then also speak at the event with Steve Forbes. So all of our clients can say that they spoke at this event with Steve Forbes. Uh, this is just one cool thing that we do in this whole celebrity space. So again, it goes back to being the personality in your business. Um, and so we help people become best-selling authors. That's one step in the process. Um, we help people get on 
on ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox. We have a, a TV show here in our Orlando studios happening in July. Um, so if you're interested in that, you know, definitely get in touch with me. We would love to get you on the show in July. Um, and then we also help people get into some of the biggest magazines, newspapers uh, in the world. Actually, um, again, I don't know when you're watching this, but in uh, June, July issue of Fast Company magazine, you can see a full page spread where we got 20 of our clients, including myself, because we put ourselves in our own media, into Fast Company magazine. And it's a nice quote. And it says, I don't remember what I said, but I said, you know, helping people greatest way to build your business. I don't know. I've made that up, but I say something <laughs> to that effect. And it's got we'll to, you know, to read the issue to find out what you just say. Yeah, go read the issue. Um, but we help people with this media creation because that's part of the trust factor, right? So you got to get them to know you, like you, trust you. So we help with the media creation, which is the trust factor. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we help with the know and like thing too because we help teach you how to then use that in your direct marketing. We help them to get to like you by teaching you how to tell your story. Um, and that's where the products come in in this whole step is, you know, products is just one piece of media uh, that you can use to tell your story and, and really help people out. So uh, really cool stuff that we do here. Um, we work with people like Brian Tracy all the time, uh, Dan Kennedy. We're doing a book with Dan Kennedy where you can co-author a book with Dan Kennedy right now. Um, uh, we're doing our bestseller summit in uh, September this year. We have 300 best-selling authors coming to Hollywood Boulevard uh, to hang out with us. Jack Canfield's coming out there. Tom Hopkins, Lifetime Award Achievement Award winner. I can just spit stuff all day. It's, it's cool stuff. Um, where can they again, check out you know, more? I, Is there a website specifically yeah, for that? Definitely. Yeah, it's Celebrity Branding Agency. Dot com again that's celebrity branding agency dot com they can learn all about the 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 personality driven media that we create for you as well as the products and the done for you marketing um, it's all housed under that agency yeah. so I have one last question for you and thanks for sharing that I mean obviously I follow your your site and you guys have some great content and I'm always responding like that was very helpful so I'm always learning and and I love your guys content so thanks for sharing that um, the last question I had was I want you to give us a little tour of your studio right there because it's pretty cool. All and right. um, maybe give us a sample of your rapping. <laughs> well, I'll definitely give you the studio tour <laughs> real quick and we'll see where that goes from there. So um, I figured actually, that'll right give you I'm time a, to think of something. So Yeah, exactly. So we'll think of something. So actually, I'm in a, a radio booth right now. So you can see with the full of the radio stuff and uh, there's all kinds of like gadgets and gizmos here. And then... Uh, Outside the office, um, we go into a, a full studio here, and you're probably going to lose my microphone. So let me just take that with me. Oh, that's okay. I thought I would I'll, just. I'll go take. Ahead. I'll, I'll take the mic with me. Uh, so yeah. So behind me, we have a whole uh, product wall. We have the TV here. Um, where we do filming for our clients. We have all of our books uh, laid out. So all the best-selling books we do for clients. And then uh, here's some cool uh, info products that we've done for clients. Are all on the shelf. Um, so you can see some of those that we do for them as well. Um, terrible angle, so uh, <laughs> you got the uh, the the quick tour um, of that stuff there. Um, so now I'm heading back to the radio room. Um, and uh, here's what I'll do on the wrapping side. If you head over to iTunes.com and look for your <laughs> because because we talked earlier, you're like there's no question that throws me off, and. <laughs> Like there's That's nothing. The one and it's gonna get me. Um, <laughs> head over to iTunes and look for G dash R O Giro. That was my hip hop name, and you'll find a couple albums over there. Um, you don't have to buy anything. I don't make any money off of that. I don't even know where the money goes. <laughs> but you can listen to some snippets. Um, there's some cool stuff there. So all right, fair <laughs> enough. That so. <laughs> I tried to buy you some time because I figured then you'd. Uh, I know. You'd I know. be able to, to uh, spit I'm, some rhymes. I'm, I'm a disappointment. Disappointment. <laughs> Disappointment. No, but Greg, it's been a pleasure. And uh, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us and, and giving us your lessons. Definitely. Yeah, definitely, man. I, Jeremy, I really appreciate it. Every time we hang out, uh, it's, it's just a good time. I get to laugh a lot and, and I get to talk about what I love. So um, I appreciate the outlet and uh, it's always a good chat. Thanks, Greg. Awesome. <laughs> Since Greg wouldn't rap when we asked, I pulled it up. Anyways, here it is. Make sure you guys
down us, give them nickels, give them dimes, give them anything Cause it comes back in due time when you do something good today It comes back tomorrow, it makes you feel good inside When the ride is over, when your time is done We can all say that we had a really good time It was fun on a Sunday, summer afternoon Do it big and we do it real soon Jen, she's not paying attention Talking to Kyle, <laughs> and I should just mention that We need to do, we need to do it real big Everybody knows that I want to live big In a nice crib with a house on a hill Doing it tonight cause we be doing it real I got my people in the front, people in the back Put your hands up, but not tonight We got cars passing by, so I'll see you tomorrow I'll see you on the drive Hold on to what we got What we got it doesn't make a difference if we make it or not Just when you thought it couldn't get any better, here's Greg with another rap session.